shit. Now nah, we're going. All right, back at the shack once again. Got two EK kits, four EG DC kits all painted up last night. So just gotta throw all the bolts in these. Take some pics for the gram. Also gonna get these chopped, shortened today, and chop up these spindles as well. Bevel them. This is kind of an all-day thing. I definitely won't be welding these tonight, but. I'll get them cut and beveled and ready to weld for whenever I come back next. These bad boys chopped up. Alright, spindles are chopped. Next step is a uh, evenness check. So hub's flat on the table as per usual. And see the angle of them is pretty damn close this side looks slightly taller but that's okay because we still need to grind and flatten these out anyway so yeah we'll just do that and then do a recheck they're pretty close right off the bat same with this side this one's a little bit taller so we'll just take off a little bit more on this one and yeah get it get the top flattened and then do a recheck and then we'll go for our actual fit up and make sure we got the right angle we need because uh, yeah, if you put these flat that is not even close to the right angle it needs to be more down like that so we will um, either possibly a mix of both come at this one take some off the bottom and then take some off the bottom here to get these to sit flat with the uh, 90 degree angle on the top side there so we got some work to do Alright, spent some time with the grinder, got these angles a little steeper, and as well did these angles a little steeper, dead even now, dead even, and the reason before when we just, ow, that's hot as shit, before we did the, uh, or right after we did the rough cut, if you remember, like two seconds ago, this was, uh, yeah, about like that which stock these are at a 90 degree angle uh, so this would be no good you would have positive camber like crazy not cool so steeper angle on these get them to match up and now we are sitting how it's gonna sit and it's at 90 or a little past the more angle you put on here the more camber there's more factors to it than that but yeah, and then also, if you run into this situation, so a lot of these spindles are thick at the bottom and thin like this at the top. So you'll have a very small landing on the top and a very big one, and you can choose where you want to put this. And essentially, the top isn't going to move side to side, right, after you shorten these. It's the top, where it sits, is determined wherever your upper control arm's uh, upper ball joint is sitting. So. If you think about it that way, the top is going to stay static, and if you move this, what you're doing, if you put it back here, what you're doing is pushing the bottom outward, giving you less camber, but if you put it like that, then what you're doing is pulling the bottom inward, giving you more camber. So, you can put it in the middle, it all depends on what your setup you're going for. For this situation, this is a set of DA spindles on a bagged, EF hatch. So we got a couple factors here we're trying to account for. One, the fact that it's bagged 
uh, we're going to need as much space as possible between the back side of the spindle and the bag so they don't rub. So for that we are we did a three inch chop because these DA spindles on an EF they're longer than the EF ones so normally on this setup if these were EF spindles it'd be a two and a half inch chop all day but we did a three inch chop just to compensate for the fact that these are DA spindles going on an EF and also the shorter you go on the spindle the flatter your upper control arm is going to sit which also equals less camber but this is not a big camber setup anyway so we're not worried about that we want that shorter spindle so that upper control arm sits flatter because with the flatter control arm it's going to push the whole spindle out more giving you more room for the bag and when you go lower or when the bags are aired out these are going to go up in the car a little bit uh, well yeah quite a bit a lot obviously but the uh, upper control arm is going to stay a little bit flatter because they are at a three inch chop which led, like I said, more room for bags. So, and then they're also shaved smooth, because in case for whatever reason they did hit the bag, it's rubbing on something nice and smooth, and you don't got these little bumps and all that shit going on. So yeah, that's what we're going for for these, and that way he can have his upper control arm flatter, have more room for bags, compensate for camber by putting it forward, and then from there, uh, he'll be able to pull in his camber kits uh, to dial it in, get his fitment right. Yep, that's the plan. So now that we got these sitting flat, we just got to go ahead and do a four-sided bevel all around these and make sure they fit up, make sure they're even, which at the moment they are. Yeah, I'll go to town with the grinder and uh, show you what we got. All right, lighting's probably terrible, but whatever. Bevels are all matched up on both sides. Same with this one. So now the next step is just to hit these with the flap, really clean them up, get them ready for the TIG weld action. And yeah, go to town like always. Hey, I know everything I just talked about is like super nerdy and might have been kind of hard to follow along, uh, but I do plan on making a very, very detailed whole tutorial on how to do spindles like the chopping, uh, the fitting, the the beveling, and then the welding part of it go into like why I use TIG and all that shit. Just be super detailed because uh, there's guys, a lot of guys like over in Belgium and the UK where they just can't find anybody willing to shorten their spindles and uh, getting shipping over there is insane. Like it's not even worth it. Like, Wheel gap is more worth the price of the cost of shipping to get these things overseas. So, yeah, I, when they get a better a better camera, because like let's be real, the quality on this thing is shit. So once I get a better camera, uh, yeah, I will be making a super in depth tutorial on how to do that. And I have had people. I made a tutorial back in the day on Instagram. That's kind of outdated but still has really good information but again shitty phone back then the camera sucked so the pictures aren't that great um, but yeah I had a couple dudes talk like ask me like yo why are you giving away your trade secrets like that's dumb and like nah it's not dumb because to be honest I don't want these to be secrets I want people to do their spindles correctly because there's lots of guys out there doing them incorrectly I've seen them break it's very scary uh, I, yeah I love the stance scene and I want everyone to have proper shit on their cars so no one dies right breaking spindles is bad it's very bad so yeah I don't want these to be secrets I want to spread all the knowledge I can so people who are willing to dive deep and chop their own spindles they do it correctly and safely Alright, I'm back. The massive 2 gigabyte memory card got full, so I had to go home and dump the files on my PC. Yeah, anyway. Uh, what I was saying is though... Fuck, what was I saying? I know there's a bunch of DIY guys out there who would rather do this spindles and stuff themselves. Uh, which is amazing. That is, makes me super hyped when I see somebody uh, doing this stuff themselves. 
I just want them to do it right and safely, so that's why I want to put out a tutorial, spread all the knowledge that I have. Not that my methods is the end-all be-all, but it works, so, and I know it's strong, uh, with put them through the paces, trust me. Uh, but for every one DIY guy that wants to do it himself, there's probably 40, 50 dudes who are, are never going to pick up a welder and try it themselves. They would, like, you know, they just get a build and they've got money to throw at it and nothing wrong with that. That's awesome. I'm here to, I'm here to do it for you if you want to slap me some cash. Um, definitely, I'm down to do that. Uh, but yeah, for those DIY guys, they're not going to pay anybody to do this anyway. They're just like me, right? Like, if I can do something myself, there's no way I'm going to pay any money when I could learn something, do it myself. So, for those guys, tutorials or not, they're going to, if they have the mindset to do it, they're going to do it anyway. So, I'd rather them have something to reference, because welding cast steel is not not commonplace even in the welding world there's almost nobody that does it so i'd rather have something out there for those diy guys that are going to do it themselves no matter what to have something to reference to so they can do it right and safely so that's why i'm gonna give away my trade secrets um yeah and there's shouldn't be any secrets in the in the stance world we all need to there's a it's very small community in the grand scheme of things and there's like this much information, this much like good information out there. So yeah, I'm gonna do everything I can to spread factual or at least 99% factual <laughs> information uh, and good information about how to fucking build these things. So no one has some janky, dangerous cars. I mean, that's bad. Actually, stupid fun to make. Work there forever, it'd fuck up the sensor over time, but it's a piece of shit. Ooh, 99 boys.